Oh so, shit! Ooh. Oh my okay. god! All so right, this is a, <laughs> this is a big fuck you card. They're on, dead. On, and then of course, Eris is gonna get edicted. If there's a bushwhacker here, <laughs> Yugi chose both of them this game. That's a bushwhacker. Hello everyone, and welcome to the top 16 of my Discord's Popper Magic the Gathering tournament. I'd like to take a quick moment to thank our patrons Bo, Beefcake, and Silky Wilkie, who are literally paying to get this video edited. Thank you all, and enjoy the games. Hello everybody, welcome. We are in the top 16 of our Discord Popper tournament. We're here with Soyeris and Jam Donut in the game, and I'm here with Papa Popper of the Common Connoisseurs and Araya, our tournament organizer, in the commentary booth. Say hi, Papa Popper. Hey there. Welcome, Connoisseurs of Fine Common Cardboard, to today's live stream. Very happy to have you all here, and I'm very excited to be casting this live streamed popper event with you mauled and with you Araya. Uh, this is this is very exciting so good to see you all here we have our game already kicking off Araya, do you want to tell us how you feel about seeing the turn one monastery swift spear <laughs> already very potent play uh, oh you have the fungal infection while this game goes on we can do a quick debrief of what's going on in the meta yeah. so we can see a very large chunk mostly was mono red burn mm -hmm. mostly of the Kessig flame breather slash thermo alchemist variant and for our bracket uh mono black burn actually had a pretty pretty big chunk 4.2 what's the next one is believe is always affinity at a 6.7 all right, guys, we already have another technical difficulty. Everyone is saying your mics are coming through crackly for some reason. So give me one second. I'm going to change the source okay. you guys are coming through on, and then we'll try it yeah. again. Uh, we can keep talking, okay. and they can let us know if it okay. improves. Yeah. Okay, everybody says that's so much better now. We're good okay. to continue Great. talking. Let's continue breaking down the metagame. Yeah. It was what? Coldosa Burn is yep. uh, bitch uh, Mono just a regular Not red good. burn. We have, we have basically like different varieties of mono red. Some of them yeah. are built around your zoo strategies with lots of creatures with your Voldaran Epicures and your Koldotha Rebirth and your Artifact Synergies, Galvanic Blast, and then others are more kind of like your traditional burn with a couple of amplifiers, which would be like your Kessig Flame Breather, your Firebrand Archer type cards. And in Popper, those cards act as other copies of Monastery Swift Spear. Monastery Swift Spear essentially amplifies the damage of your burn spells. And so what we have here is a Koldotha variety, which as Araya correctly described, is a higher variance strategy. They're needing to adapt to having more things that sacrifice permanence. Cards like your Implement of Combustion, your Experimental Synthesizer, Lava Dart, Fire Blast. Um, one that we actually don't see in this list, despite the, art of the uh, Goblin Synergies, is actually Goblin Grenade. It's quite interesting to see how the uh, metagame has evolved here, but basically we're looking at like a slightly zoo-ish form of burn. They're also playing Goblin Bushwhacker. Uh, where they can have really powerful turns paired with the Cold Oath Rebirth to really swarm their opponent. And what we did see at the beginning of this game was a very interesting interaction with a very niche card that's worth highlighting, which is Fungal Infection. Turn one Fungal Infection on the Monastery Swift Spear was able to decrease its power and toughness to a 0-1 and then block it as a 1-1. One, one. And so while that card generally, its applications are gonna be more in like fairies, it does have applications here in Burn and that it's kind of like life game when you say a riot. It's, it's, you know, you're producing a blocker, you're maybe killing an attacker. I think I'm not super crazy on the card, but I can definitely see yeah. in a like ga uh, gardens where you really just wanna have those bodies yeah. and double the removal piece. It's gonna buy you a lot of time specifically against, uh, against Burn. Yes. Uh, specifically, this variation with playing Goblin Bushwhacker. Yep. You know, you have your one of the tokens off of Coldotha. Uh, amazing Spinning Darkness here just to buy a lot of time. Yeah, here. Spinning Darkness is basically like Lightning Helix uh, free, and it's quite strong in these matchups. You see a 2 2 split with Snuff Out and Spinning Darkness in this particular list, I believe, um, which is uh, a nod to A, how good Terror decks are, and B, how good burn is and burn strategies because really burn it's not just burn it's like you also have your your boros synth decks which are playing in some cases as many as 10 burn spells with foundry helix galvanic blast and lightning bolt you know the fungal infection is really interesting too because this deck is playing eight copies of deadly dispute and reckoner's bargain so having another body that you can leverage to that alongside your colony gardens and your uh, Guild Sworn Prowlers is one commonly played one, is definitely advantageous. So the two copies of it seems disciplined, but I think you're right in that that card is going to be dead in a lot of matchups too. It's a it's a nod to things that they're concerned about. It tells us that they're concerned about dying. Uh, they really want to have early answers on one. Other versions of this deck that play more Swamps would actually be on Defile, 
which is the card I would prefer in that slot. There's another player who's also in this um, in this tournament who is um, uh, less onto artifact synergies and more onto uh, you know just having because this player has um, has Vault of Whisper instead of in the slots of swamps. So with only eight swamps in the deck and maybe like one duel, they just don't really have enough to make Defile consistent. Eris is digging semi greedily for I think Goblin Blast Runner, and as soon as they get that, it's going to get really fucking bad. Their three synthesizer rips now have hit two lands, and then one of the kicker got like it's hit only things they super yeah. didn't want it to hit. Pretty bummer position for Sosiris so so right now. They're you know deep into you know turn five here, right? Is that was where we're at? Turn five, and they have turn five five lands. Oh shit! Um, the best artifact in Popper, <laughs> Implement of Combustion. I believe in our notes session, you looked at this and you said, what the frick? Uh, yeah. So, Araya, maybe you can tell me a little bit about this. Uh, you know, Implement of Combustion clearly is a nod to the Goblin Blast Runner, which is essentially like Delver of Secrets uh, in red. And Implement seems to be like a nod towards, I want to draw cards, I want to have something to sacrifice, and it needed to do damage because of the philosophy of fire. Is that sort of capture why people are running that? Because otherwise it seems yeah. pretty mid. Implement of Combustion was run before the, the Blast Runner was in the deck. It's basically just a way for the deck to have something to sacrifice to feed the cold delta rebirth because in that variation of the deck i mean that's what the deck's named after so it's the best card in that deck just putting three power on the board uh that can get bigger with your bushwhackers is just super big and amazing snuff out uh yeah. not something you want to see but i love that eris has accepted i'm just going to beat you to death with two twos <laughs> they've given up on burn they're like give me yeah. my samurais i'm going to fucking stab you yeah uh, and this is going to be like very much predicated on uh, Jam Donut finding a Reckoner's Bargain. Because... They're also digging for, if they find their hunters, they can just yep. lay one down and then they probably just raw outvalue them. Would oh, be, there it is. Know, for... Oh, yep. <laughs> you yep. said it, they had it. <laughs> Three <laughs> cards, right? It's, Three it's a cards, huge spike yeah. in card advantage. I would be really cagey about deploying a, an Avenging Hunter right now because a Fire Blast is going to feel mm -hmm. very free. If you resolve the Avenging Hunter, they Fire Blast it, they hit you, they gain the initiative, you are going to lose that game. These are like Monarch and Initiative cards can only be played when the board is clear. Seven cards in hand, like, it's a lot. Um, they really need to be like sweeping the board, resolving an Avenging Hunter or a Thorn of the Black Rose and hoping that they don't get punished by like Fire Blast and Monastery Swift Spear uh, or something of that ilk because um, you cannot give the burn player the initiative or the monarch. Exactly. Um, they just use a Galvanic Blast because you talked about Fireball being able to clear one of those hunters. Galvanic Blast could also have done it because yeah. they have great furnaces. They had a blood token, which they just dropped. Yeah. Shapey has asked which deck has more uh, sideboard options for this particular matchup, and we did talk about this. I, I think you had some pretty funny opinions about who you thought was coming out on top in the sideboard war. So one of the things we notice is uh, the burn player has two slots allocated towards Flaring Pain, which is kind of an interesting deal. Like Flaring Pain is a card that really belongs in a in a, in a bit of a previous meta. There's not a whole lot of prismatic strands running around, so um, the really worth. <laughs> I mean, it smashes Smithereens potentially and maybe Relic, but other than that, I, I, I really don't see a ton to bring out, bring in. Arya, what do you think about in terms of uh, Red's, Red's uh, options here? For Mono Red, I don't think they have a lot of options against the yeah. Colony Garden, uh, mainly because they are not running, there's not a lot of anti life gain in this format, unfortunately, with for Mono Red. Hmm. There the is none. Can, <laughs> not until it gets full crack. Their cyber is mostly against the two better decks, not concluding it, which is uh, Artifacts in, in the form of Affinity and Mono Blue Delver. I feel very worried for Eris because Jam now mm -hmm. has Chainer's Edict in the graveyard. Oh, and there's the Blast Runner. But I think yeah. Jam is also one mana away from being able to flash back that Edict. Oh, and they immediately cast out the Blast Runner anyway. Yeah. So this is, yeah. like, they still have four cards in hand. They're still sitting on a, a one, two, three, four, fuck you punch. But yeah. Jam's Garden deck is now, I think, they have a lot of stuff set up. If they get one more Reckoner's Bargain, it's another three cards. Yeah. And they're going to start really outpacing... Uh, not right. to the level of something like Jeskai Ephemerate, which is going to dig through their entire deck in a 15 minute game. Unless those four cards are four bolts and Eris is mm -hmm. just being silly. Oh, and they got a Colony Garden for yeah. a blocker. If you're Soeris, you 
really, really wanted to end this game a lot sooner. The longer it goes is going to favor Jam Donut. This Golgari deck will draw its whole deck. In fact, the last time that I was playing at Rags to Riches, I was playing a Boros Synth deck and uh, played against this Black Gardens deck. And I did get to the point where my, my win condition was decking them. Um, and uh, they came very close, but um, they can grind with the best of them. The trouble that Soeris is in right now is really, they just need to amass so many burn spells that they can just do it all at once. I smell desperation because they just cracked a yeah. blood token for the looting. And, and those so blood tokens they're... are important for Metalcraft, you know, yeah. it's it's, uh, it's desperation. But having so many lands, I think that this is a game that they needed to win game one because their game two and potentially game three in this case are going to be hard. Their they're... lack of sideboard options is really telling. And Jam, uh, I don't know if we want to reel the individual cards, but Jam's uh. sideboard is built. They have a deep fear of burn within their heart. And so if they don't yeah. even lose the pre-board game and they've just taken the initiative. Soyaris is at 20 life. Uh, on the back foot, very much about yeah. to be pushed off the cliff. This is and game over, for sure. Sorry, we have one person who's asking about the uh, winner of the tournament. So for anybody that doesn't know, the prize pool for this tournament is $700. The winner right now is getting in the neighborhood of $300 for winning this tournament. Huh? We're coming into the end of game one here uh, with a burn deck against a Golgari initiative deck uh, called Gardens. And the Golgari player is at six life, so may get snuffed out, but they have the initiative, they have an Avenging Hunter. This is a big fuck you card. This is a big, okay, and they're chain lightninging. All right, so Jam's at three. We're now we're now at the point where, unless they get some serious life gain, they're probably oh, dead it. in the water. Oh, they got the bolt. Wow. All right, wow. Eris I mean, is gonna take game yeah. one. That's huge. Uh, right. We in the booth believe the post-board matchups to be very favored for Jam. Jam has a sideboard that is... Uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit about the sideboard. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about Campfire. Yeah. Let's talk yeah. for a minute about the card Campfire. So we've got a one mana artifact that you can pay one colorless to tap and gain two life repeatedly. It has a secondary ability where you can pay two to exile it, put all commanders you own from your command zone from your graveyard into your hand, then shuffle your graveyard into your library. So the main reason we're playing it is because we can gain life repeatedly as well as use this for sacrifice fodder to Deadly Dispute or to Reckoner's Bargain to either gain more life or just draw more cards. There are a full four copies of Campfire. Yeah. This person, <laughs> this person shows violence this morning. burn in the sideboard. <laughs> Eris has a sideboard meant for a couple different matchups. Jam has a sideboard that says, if you're playing red, I want to see you squirm. Now, because it's best of three, red always has a puncher's chance. When they're done with boarding, Jam is probably going to be in a much stronger position than they were yeah. at the beginning of game one. And, and we're one back you're into gonna... game two. So what we're going to see from Soeris potentially is being caught between the pinch of needing to apply pressure before the campfires come down and start basically inflicting card disadvantage on them. Yep, we have a turn one campfire. Turn this one, they because, fucking found it. <laughs> yeah, and then like Soeris is also now going to have to lean into going even faster because they need to end the game quickly, but the weather the storms are going to punish that. If they cast multiple spells in a turn, weather the storm will close the story on this game in a single moment. It'll be, you know, gain 12, gain 15, something like that. And uh, and then the campfire will do the rest. We're in a position where this could get very interesting because they both have basically like the perfect turn one for what they want. And then of course, Eris is gonna get edicted because if you're playing red, fuck you. In the face of two life for one mana in a slow deck, your only real hope to outpace that is either a blast runner that's permanently on or multiple swift spears that are permanently on. Yeah. And yep. they got the turn one Swift Spear immediately punished. This person just immediately, you need to take that and you need to get it the fuck out of my but face. It, yep. uh, and well, they have another one. one. So Eris here has, um, you know, was lucky to get a hand that had two of these. Uh, maybe one was off the top. They're doing what they need to do. The question is, is it going to be soon enough? Is it going to be fast and hard enough? It needs to be rock hard for them to push through. Jam Donut is going to get like three of these campfires in play. All right, we just have to be very clear about that. Like that last game, they were down to 30 cards in deck. 
multiple campfires are going to be very hard to beat, especially with the mana advantage they get. We've got a Voldaren Epicure producing a blood token. They don't have Metalcraft online. They're a ways away from Metalcraft. The blood token may give them fodder for a Koldotha Rebirth, something of that nature. We have a plant token That's with a Colony Garden. That's a heartbreaking blocker. Yeah, when you have a uh, but sphere. for you know Soaris, the problem is is that a lot of these burn decks aren't running uh, Searing Blaze. Searing Blaze is exactly the card you want against a plant token because otherwise that plant token was basically like Upland gain three, gain four, right? Like yo, know, there's an implement of combustion. This right here uh, only hits players, unfortunately. We have a Cold Oath of Rebirth oh. coming off that. This is a very good start uh, for Soaris, although um, what we really wanted to see was a Lava Dart on that plant token, mm -hmm. followed by a Cold Oath of Rebirth, because the Swift Spear, which would otherwise be hitting for three, is hitting for zero, which is virtually like gain three life. Yeah, I mean, they're know. hitting for negative two, because yeah, they're just exactly. in a campfire. Yep, yep, exactly. So, so this is uh, this is really demonstrating the power of this. Wow, okay, we've got oh Reckoner's my Bargain. God, God, that's even worse. Reckoner the plant token? <laughs> These people both got the nuts. Did, Jam got really their did. post board nuts, and for Eris, yeah. this is probably like two Swift Spears, Koldotha Rebirth, and a thing to sack to it. Yugi, Yugi chose both of them this game. And we, we actually see a Golgari Rot Farm coming down to pick up that Colony Garden. It, it is not good for them. Uh, I think I believe... these campfires are really good, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, these campfires is, are fucking this is like crazy. Really good. Have you played Dark Souls? Campfires are fucking broken, my man. I have not played Dark Souls. I'm, I'm a dirty heathen. I never really had a PlayStation, so that, that's uh, I was an Xbox guy. I was like, uh, I... you're, you're MLG, Halo, oh, and they got uh, another... Halo, and Gears of War player. Oh, so, shit. Air... Oh, my uh, okay. God. All so right, this is. <laughs> if there's a bushwhacker here, that's a bushwhacker. This is uh, almost lethal. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. That's lethal. After we talked all this shit about Jam's post board, did Eris just get them? Dude, no. Jam might just be bodied by this. Um, he's maybe killed the Monastery Swift Spear and keep yeah. alive for another turn. And get to, yeah, but if they don't have a sweeper, what do they do about... Well, right, they're they, staring down a bajillion goblins. The best way to do it would be to resolve a... They could go Crypt Rats, pop it for one, go to one. So Arius, their start here is the Stone Cold Nuts. <laughs> they have two... Okay, well, there it is. So there's a Crypt Rats. Yeah. They need to do this. Now they're they're going to pop it for one, and then they're going to play the Colony Garden's second main. What do you think they the need... odds? What do you think <laughs> the odds one of those two cards is a bolt? They're on dead. The, on... This can't just be two lands, right? They, they definitely have like a chain lightning, a lightning bolt, a lava, you know, lava dart. This deck only plays it. Yeah. Okay. There's a Voldar and Epicure. Epicure. Yeah. So that's GG. Oh yeah. Wow. That's GG. Um, Holy shit. Eris 2-0. I do think that that isn't exactly the uh, outcome I would have predicted. You know, a high variance deck, you play it because your ups are bigger and your downs. Well, we don't play it for the downs, <laughs> right? And he got that, right? He got two Cold Oath Rebirths. He got two Swift Spears, and he got a Goblin Bushwhacker and his lands. I don't think you can ask for much more. You um, really know you cannot.